Hi y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, in this morning's video, I'm gonna be doing some bank fishing for whatever bites, whatever wants to play, I wanna catch it. Kinda got bamboozled by the weatherman today. I slept in because I thought the weather was supposed to be bad this morning. I thought we were supposed to be getting some storms. Well, it's a little cloudy, but as you can see, the sun's up there in the sky. It ain't raining, it ain't storming, weather's fine. I could have got out on the water this morning, but missed my chance. So over here now at a local boat ramp, we got some geese over here too. I ain't the only one wanting to fish this area apparently. Goosey and honkers over here. We're gonna be hearing them on video, but nevertheless, I'm gonna make some cash y'all right here around this uh, boat dock. It provides shade to these fish, a little bit of depth. I already see some small uh, minnow, shad right there, some bluegill. Um, we're gonna catch a lot. We're probably gonna get a variety of species here today. Could be bluegill, could be bass, could be shellcracker, maybe some crappie. I'm just gonna make some casts here with the jig. Right there, there's something splashing right there. But uh, I got my ultralight rod with me. Gonna be using some gulp minnows and small jig heads. Boy, these geese are gonna be a test of my patience here, y'all. They as bad as a dang jet skier out here as far as annoying you, but I'm gonna make some casts. We're gonna catch some fish. I got my bucket with me. Whatever I catch today, we're gonna keep and use some live baits in the next catfishing video. So come with me, let's have some fun. Try to not listen too much to these geese. They got a lot to say, but they're like people on Facebook. Even though they got a lot to say, a lot of opinions, nobody wants to hear it. So you just keep talking geese. We gonna ignore you. Let's catch some fish. So guys, here is the bait. That is a one inch gulp minnow in the smelt color on a 132nd ounce jig head with a number six hook. Got that on my ultralight rod. That's a St. Croix Panfish Series rod, six foot long, two pound test monofilament line. All my gears linked down in the video description always. I'm gonna make some casts here. I'm gonna start out on this rocky area first and then just kind of make my way around. Oh, right there, right there. Oh man, I was almost back up to the shore and he come up and got it. That's a nice bluegill right there. He'll definitely go in the bucket. I brought my bucket here. Just a five gallon bucket that I've modified into a bait tank. There he is, nice bluegill. I've been asked about this bucket here before y'all. I'll kind of, now's probably a good time to do a little overview on it, but it's a five gallon bucket from Walmart there. On the top, I've got a kayak hatch. That's just an eight inch kayak hatch you get those on amazon for 10 15 dollars i cut out the five gallon bucket lid just a circular diameter there to fit that hatch down in it so now i have a lid that i can easily open and close back here i drilled some holes run some air tubing down and this is a uh, just small aerator here hold that on a couple seconds that button down and it turns on and now i've got aeration down in there and that pump this is like $20 there on Amazon. That's linked in my description too, but uh, you know, it's rechargeable, small, compact. And so I just use that from a bait tank. But anyway, that's one bluegill down. Let's catch some more. There's one, there's one. <laughs> Boy, that's a nice bluegill right there. Nice bluegill, that's another one for the bucket. Nice, we'll definitely take him. We're gonna feed him to some catfish coming up real soon. Maybe even tomorrow, possibly. There's one. I'm just crawling that thing over the bottom, y'all. Just barely moving it. And they're getting it. It's another dang good quality right here though. Oh. Let me get hold of it over here. Set the rod down. This one's mad at me. This is like one of them loudmouth geese over there. It ain't happy with me being in his area. Too bad, Bluegill. You can be mad at me, but you're gonna be catfish bait. It's fun, y'all. I've said this so many times in my ultralight videos, but these ultralight rods will always keep you on fish. You know, if you need catfish bait, if you just need to have a good time, get you an ultralight rod and set up. Keep you some jig heads and gulp minnows in your car. And when you got a few minutes after work, before school, whenever, run over to your local lake or pond or creek. 
and make some casts. And right there's, oh, I had another one. Boy, he hit me hard right there. I'm talking and botched it. He stole my mina too. Boy, we got a thief down there, y'all. Look at that. Stole my mina. Somebody call the law. Call 911. I've been robbed. Let me go up here and get me another gulp. But uh, like I was saying there, y'all, this style of fishing, you can literally do it anywhere. Creeks, ponds, lakes, rivers. Go out and make you some casts and you'll have a dang good time. You'll catch some fish, you'll get bites, you'll get action, and everything is fun on the ultralight because they all put a big bend in the rod. Even these bluegill that are, you know, six, seven, I don't know if any of those reach eight inches, but they still put a big bend in the rod and give you a tug there and, and have fun. I have fun with it anyway. I think you would too. I'm gonna go get me another gulp put on and we're gonna have some more fun. Got him, got him right there. I got hit, I let that thing stop and fall and he hit it. Oh goodness, get up here fish. Man, look at that, that's another just quality bluegill right there guys. Another quality bluegill. They will make a good size catfish bait. I don't know how many I'm gonna keep today, maybe. Maybe six or eight, probably. Wouldn't mind having some variety. I don't know, you know, what all I'll catch over here. I've, I've fished this boat ramp before, both bluegill fishing, bass fishing, cat fishing. I've done everything over here. It's convenient. But, uh, you know, you, you just get a mixed bag depending on time of year and season and whatnot. It could be anything over here. But if I do get a variety today, crappie or yellow bass, whatever. We're gonna, we're gonna stick them in that bucket and take them to feed them to some cats, man. There it is. There's another one. Hopefully the camera's still running, y'all. <laughs> I've had technical difficulties. I was facing into direct sun there, the way I was standing. And the camera said, not today, Justin, not today. Overheating on me. So I've kind of angled myself. I first went over here, y'all, over here to the dock, <clears throat> made a few casts, but there's so many small fry over there. I don't know if it's shad or baby bluegill or what. Oh, there's just ain't nothing going on, just smaller, way smaller bluegill than that over there at that dock. So I come back over here and thought, I will position myself sideways into the sun and see if I can keep this camera rolling. Because I'd like to film these fish that I'm catching. May film myself taking a tumble down these rocks too before it's said and done. But these are some pretty good quality bluegill. And again, they're pretty much on bottom. Maybe some beds over here that I can't really see due to the watercolor and, and whatnot. But I'm just letting that jig sink down and pretty much just slowly just crawling it across the bottom. And that's when I'm getting hit. Uh, when I'm reeling it higher up in the water column, there's just nothing going on. So there could be some bad activity here. We're into June now. So, you know, oftentimes we're done with the bluegill spawn by now, but the way they're, the way they're hitting and the way they're positioned right on bottom, I'm inclined to believe that there could be some beds here. Oh, there's a fish. Let's reel that one in, y'all. See what we got right here. That's a bluegill. A little bit smaller than what I was getting. I had to move, y'all. Well, there he is. I didn't have to move. I chose to move. Let me set the rod down. I'll tell you what's going on. So, uh, my regular audience, y'all know how I am. I've been doing YouTube for years, but I'm still... I just don't like talking on camera when there's people around. And I was over there at the park, fella come up, he started fishing out there uh, close to me and whatnot within earshot. And I was like, you know, uh, you know, it's just gonna affect the video because again, I'm a weirdo. So I packed up a move, uh, drove across town here, and now I'm fishing in a little culvert. I'm in a, in a creek. And since they're pulling so much water there to dam, it looks like water is flowing into this culvert. Like it's being pushed back up into this creek. And so I'm gonna cast this jig up under here. If 
first cast under there just got that bluegill. So uh, going to put in a little time here. I left my bucket in the car because I didn't want to lug it from the car all the way out here. But I'm uh, just going to be catching release here unless I get something like a, you know, crappie or, um, you know, a white bass, something maybe a larger bait that's something different than what I've got in the bluegill. I may run it up to the car right quick and stick it in the bucket. But if I'm just getting bluegill, I'm going to release them here. But I'm curious to see what all I get out of here. Get my camera back on there rocking a new camera mount today y'all got a looks like a necklace that holds the camera it seems to be working out pretty good thus far so uh may make my bank fishing trips in the future a little bit easier on me well, i'm just letting that jig fall back down in through there letting this sink down i'm gonna something was hitting me right there I'm getting tapped right there. He, oh man, he hit it. Let's try that again. One for two. I'm actually going to let out a little slack on that. Let it get farther back up under there. I'm hoping this current has them fish facing into this thing. And as my jig falls down toward the bottom, they're just going to snatch it up. That's what I'm hoping anyway. We'll see if it happens. Most important thing that makes this a good bank fishing spot right now for me is the fact there's nobody else here. So I can talk and be stupid and be myself on camera without having a complex about it. Because I'm weird like that. Oh, oh, something was hitting me. I got him. I got him. He hit it and come back for it. What is this? That's another bluegill. Yeah, these, these guys, look at his colorations on his side there. If he'll quit flopping around, he's got a weird scale pattern there. These aren't quite as big as the ones I was getting over at the park. But I think those other ones over there may have been bedding fish, possibly. Because I was having to just creep that thing along the bottom to, to get bit. Oh, I got hit again. Man, they're in here. They're in this culvert, buddy. You would think as many bluegill is back here. I'm getting bit every cast now. But there might be some other stuff in here. Maybe some bass or at least some yellow bass. White bass or something. Oh, get out of here. Oh, man. Look at this, y'all. Oh, man. This dang fish. Let me show you what he's done here. He was flopping around on the way out. Look at this. He got my, y'all with a foot fetish gonna love this. He got my toe on the way out. Done cut me open. Daggone workers comp. Somebody file a workers comp claim for me. I've done been injured on the job here. Dang fish done shanked me on the way out. And all the perverts gonna be messaging me cause I just showed off my feet. I don't even hardly wear flip flops in videos anymore cause all you perverts out there. But anyway, let me get my necklace back on here y'all. I'm gonna bleed to death here on my foot. I'm gonna try to catch another fish before I bleed out or get an infection in that wound and end up with sepsis. Oh, that's a fish. I thought I snagged there for a second, y'all. That's not a bluegill. That's not a bluegill, I don't believe. If it is, it's a good one. That's bass. That's a large jaw right there. Oh, large jaw bass. Got him a gulp minna. Come over here, large jaw. You offering up a little variety on this, on this video. Yeah. Thank you, large jaw. Well, he ain't big as nothing, but when I first picked up on that jig, I thought I was down in a, in a little snag and then it started pulling back on me. Oh, that was a terrible cast, wasn't it? I ain't much of a caster, y'all. I'm made for catfishing and carp fishing because you don't have to have accurate casts in that. But ultimately, I'm getting this jig back down in there. 
a nice fish in this culvert, man. I got something. I do. Oh, there was a bass that come up after him too. The bass was about as big as the bluegill, but he come after him, chasing him out through there. I made a few casts and didn't get anything in the culvert. So I thought I'm gonna cast around here. Let's kind of cast around the culvert. See what's going on out here. And I hooked that small bluegill and I saw a bass come up right there after him. I don't know what the hell he would have done with him if he had got him. I don't think he could have choked that bluegill down. But he come after him like a heat seeking missile. There's one. Oh, that's a better one right there. That's a better one right there, man. Oh, he's over here. Tried to get him on camera. This is my new mount here. I don't know exactly where that camera's facing at any given time. But that, folks, is another quality bluegill. He's lucky I don't have my bucket over here or he'd be coming with us and we'd feed him to something. How lucky do you feel right now, bluegill? Tell him. He says he don't feel lucky at all. He just got a hook through the jaw. He's pretty though, look at that. Look at that color on him there. It's like a bluish green in the mouth. Pretty fish. We'll see you, bluegill. Next time you coming with me. He don't feel lucky because he got that hook through the jaws. I about fall down making the cast, but he's luckier than he thinks he is. Like most of us human beings. Y'all, I just got back to the car, got the heebie-jeebies off of me because my life just flashed before my eyes. My camera battery had died and I was walking back. I was going to get me a new battery and go back out there and catch some more fish. And I'm walking along the guardrail here along the road and I hear something kind of down in the bushes and I look down and there's a huge snake down there. I mean, huge snake. I don't know what kind it was. I thought it was a rattlesnake, but by gosh, I, I tell it, I don't do snakes. I don't like them. Here I am. I'm my dumb ass out here in flip flops walking along these rocks. My day, my fishing day, at least bank fishing wise, is over. I ain't getting, I don't do snakes. So I'm gonna, now that I'm back in the car, calm down about two notches, I think I'm gonna go get me a milkshake from the Sonic and regroup. If these storms ever move in, I guess my day's over, but I'm gonna keep an eye on radar. Like I said, I slept in today thinking that. Uh, weather was gonna knock me out of fishing and uh it's the weather's been fine i could have got out in the kayak no problem out there so far this morning but uh anyway uh got some fish got some bluegill today got a bass and got a dang near heart attack from that snake so i'm gonna go get me a milkshake and uh and rethink this whole bank fishing thing so y'all be safe out there get you an ultralight rod get you some gulp minnows go have some fun but by gosh wear shoes, wear boots or something when you're on the bank because you never know when a dang old snake's going to reach out and grab you. Anyway, I'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks for watching.